Hello, welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. I had a viewer request a video about MELs and CDLs. So I thought I would make that video and also include a discussion of something else that wasn't even requested called NEFs. So let's dive in. <clears throat> this is a very common topic that you would talk about at airlines and especially in operations or for dispatch because both pilots and dispatchers and also maintenance control deals with these items all the time. So the background for why we even have a minimum equipment list is that 14 CFR requires everything on the aircraft to work. However, with a very large, complex aircraft, that's impractical. So, yay, the FAA also allows us to operate with a minimum equipment list. This is an operator specific item. I'll talk in a minute about where they actually come from because we have found that you don't have to have everything operational to still maintain an adequate level of safety or an acceptable level of safety, I should say. So there is some redundancy, especially with large aircraft. And what happens is the FAA and manufacturer, Boeing, Airbus, Embraer, Bombardier, they will develop a master MEL, so MMEL. They put this thing together and then each airline, each air carrier can go in and develop their own specific MEL. It's going to be specific to their aircraft, what's installed in their aircraft type in their fleet. Sometimes you have various differences even within the fleet. So the operator's MEL can get really specific down to even listing sometimes tail numbers. I've seen in the MEL saying this item applies to this tail numbers, this item applies to these other tail numbers. So we're going to base it on that aircraft type. Bonus points if you guys can figure out where my mug came from. Uh, and the aircraft configuration. So essentially the MEL is a list of things that can be broken as long as they are taken care of in a safe way. But it's a list of things that can be broken, but the aircraft still operate. That means, it's not really said, but it's implied that everything that is not in the MEL has to be operating. So the MEL will not contain something like the ailerons. It's not going to contain something like the wing or the whole pilot seat. These things have to be there. Now, could be, I seen in an MEL, something like the pilot's armrest is allowed to be uh, not movable or even missing, for example. But that would be an example of a comfort type of thing, whereas the whole pilot seat, that's not listed in the MEL. And so the translation of this is if you can't find it in the operator's MEL, it has to be working. So no putting things into a non-usable status if it's not listed in the MEL. So what, what do we do with all this? All right, if something doesn't work, then we are going to make an entry in the aircraft's maintenance logbook. This is a logbook. Some of them are digital. Some might still be paper. But then maintenance is going to decide, are we going to fix the item or are we going to what we call defer the item? It's a term you hear people use a lot in the aviation industry. If the minimum equipment list allows it and it's okay with the pilots and the dispatcher of the flight and maintenance control, if all the people agree that it's okay and it's safe, then we could defer it if it's listed in the minimum equipment list. If we have lots of things that are not working, so that could happen, then you have to consider like the relationship between these things so that we don't overload the crew and there's interrelated systems on the aircraft. So we don't want this to become a safety problem because yes, thing A could be broken, thing B could be broken, 
if we throw in thing C, how does that affect A and B and what the crew is dealing with for their flight? So that is the minimum equipment list. I do have some examples coming, so pay attention because we're going to look at just a couple real brief what they look like. Now, the viewer also asked me to talk about CDLs. Okay, a CDL is a configuration deviation list. Big airplanes, again, have many complex systems, and the CDL is going to have limitations and procedures for if something is missing. So it sounds like really weird, so I'll give you a couple examples. There are a lot of what we call fairings, so that's like aerodynamic pieces that fit around parts of the aircraft, especially parts that move, such as the flaps. Um, there are things such as a little uh, piece of a door that might cover a little fuel panel uh, or lavatory service little panel or something. These things provide aerodynamic improvements to the aircraft and they reduce drag. So, but they could be missing. Sometimes they have to be removed. Sometimes they just might get broken off. But these things are items that could be missing. But they have a consideration, again, for the aircraft's performance. Okay, so the bonus is we're going to also mention the non-essential furnishings list. This is something that I had at the company where I used to work, my old charter company with the MD-80s. We had a huge list of things that could be broken that don't affect anything besides passenger comfort or maybe branding of the aircraft. So an example might be like a window shade. So if we had a window shade that was stuck in the up position, we could have this on the non-essential furnishings list because it really isn't an airworthiness item. So it's not on the minimum equipment list. It's not missing. So it's not on the configuration deviation list. Here's another example. I saw this on a flight that I was on. It is a light up thing in an A380 that is a British Airways symbol. So could that thing be not there or somehow damaged? Yeah. Does the company want to know about it to fix it later? Probably. So something like this has no function for safety, efficiency, has nothing to do with aerodynamics. So something like this could be on the non-essential furnishings list. MELs do fall into these categories. These apply to MELs. You wouldn't have to memorize these because this will be listed in the MEL in the introduction. But these items have a date range in which they have to be repaired. So as an example, a lot of items you see in an MEL are C category, sometimes B. But basically, the day that the thing is discovered to be not working doesn't count but then you have a certain amount of consecutive calendar days. And by a calendar day, we mean like a 24-hour day. So if I find it at noon, then I would have until midnight on the following day to call that like one calendar day. Okay, so I promised a few examples. So here's some examples from a minimum equipment list that is not specific to any airline because it is totally generic thing that I that I have for dispatch class that I teach. This does apply to the Boeing 737 aircraft. This one is from a Boeing 737 operator that has different types of aircraft in its fleet, like different series. Notice they have some information in the bottom about 300 and 500 series aircraft, so you could see something like that. But let's talk about what you see here. So this number in this operator's MEL is how many of the item are installed. This is how many would be working. This next section below says there's two installed again, but this is if zero are working. Okay, so we have this procedure if we have one of them working. And then this whole procedure, if we have none of the air conditioning packs working, this is a, a serious number, this serious thing, because if the air conditioning packs don't work, we have issues with keeping the cabin pressurized. You'll notice the number, perhaps. This first number, 21, these are something 
that correspond with something called ATA codes. So this is codes that correspond with various systems on the aircraft. And so you can look at these codes and you can figure out right away the first two digits what system they're in. Don't memorize that or anything, but there's a whole index list. It applies to all kinds of aircraft. So any manufacturer, Boeing, Airbus, Bombardier, uh, Embraer, whatever. Okay. Um, and then we have some other information. O right here means it's an operations procedure. So there's something operational that we have to do. And then right here, we see the letter C. That's the category. So if I went back to my category list, that would be a category C item and it would have to be repaired within 10 consecutive days. Okay, then you can look at like what the limitations are. Okay, so this actually has an important limitation. If only one air conditioning pack is working as a dispatcher, I have to limit the flight altitude to flight level 250 or below. That has to do with pressurization requirements of the aircraft. If you go down to zero pressure or zero packs operating, then the flight has to be operated unpressurized. Okay. And the outflow valve has to be open. This would not be a good situation. I would only do this on a very short flight if absolutely necessary, or better yet, a ferry flight with no passengers on board because this is going to be uncomfortable to operate a Boeing 737 totally unpressurized with no air conditioning airflow. You also have to have a placard installed, so it's going to be some kind of label. Okay. Again, I'm not going to go into all the detail, but that is an example. Here's another example that I just wanted to have on here. This is for two different types of aircraft. So this one has, it's for the 200 series. And this operator had the 737, 200, 300, 500. Um, so this is really old MEL actually. But then there's another one for the mock trim system for the 300, 500. Okay, so the 300, 500 series have two and one working or two and zero working. With the 200 series, you have one only installed and zero can be working if you're on that. But then we have different limitations. So limit the airspeed to Mach 0.74. The dispatcher has to put a special note on the dispatch release. And M is listed next to O. So that means there's a maintenance procedure and an operations procedure. Fuel boost pumps. I put this in here because dispatchers frequently get asked about this on practical tests in my experience. This one is interesting. So in the main tank of the 737, we have four fuel tank boost pumps. Two of them can be inoperative, but you have to make sure that it's set up correctly. So you have a certain amount of fuel, 4,800 pounds in this case, that you have to keep in the tank. And this has to do with not sloshing the fuel around so much that the pump cavitates. It doesn't like it if it starts sucking air, okay? So pretty interesting. You actually have some unusable extra fuel that we're carrying around now as dead weight, and you would have to plan for that with the dispatch release. There was other things on there. I'm not going to go over them, but yeah. The configuration deviation list. So here's an example. This is for the a flap seal plate, apparently called the elephant ears. It's a fun name, right? So this I have an example here to show you guys. Is again, there's more than one type of model in this fleet that these uh, elephant ear things are installed in. It explains how many are installed, but zero are required, for example. Now, if you have these flap inboard seal plates removed, then if you're dispatching a 300 series Boeing 737, you would have to increase the fuel requirement by 1.1% because the airplane is less aerodynamic. You could do this through your computer flight planning system. And then you also have some adjustments to the runway limit weight and the climb limit weight. And even this en route actually talks about a drift down weight limit. So if you're interested in 
weight limit videos for large aircraft and drift down things. I have some other content on that on my channel. So do check those things out. Um, so you just notice that the aircraft now cannot be as heavy as it would be without this with this thing installed because again it's less aerodynamic it says one or both can be missing okay and there's also some various operations and a limit that you can't use flaps 40 setting again i'm not like fully versed in all this but the configuration deviation list can get kind of technical so you always want to make sure you understand what the limitation is that's associated with that item so Thanks for watching Aviation 101 with Laura. Be sure to comment, tell me what else you like to see covered because I love suggestions from viewers and I hope you have a fantastic day.